Welcome back again. So today we're going to talk some more about interrupts. So we actually got a pretty good introduction to interrupts last time. Uh, so this is the code from last time before interrupts. Uh, before interrupts, what would happen is it would just run the program, you know, one line at a time. I mean, you would know exactly which line was coming, coming next. And it would go through this. This is called batch programming or sequential programming, where it just goes line by line all the way through. What we added last time, though, is we added a timer interrupt. Uh, and the way we did that is we said interrupts on uh, when we set up the timer. Uh, we also did this thing where we had this global interrupt enable, and we said allow them there as well. What happens in this case is it runs through that main loop. So it just kind of goes um, in the same way it did before, and that goes, you know, around and around and around, unless an interrupt event occurs. If an interrupt event occurs, it just says, hey, I see, I see an interrupt event. Uh, go do that thing, um, and then when you're finished, come back. So the thing that it would go do uh, was this high ISR. So it would call this function, so it just stop the main while loop, uh, call this function, uh, and it would do it all the way through. Uh, whenever you're inside an ISR, they always have the same look. You say, hey, which flag was it that got me here? So you have this if statement that says, hey, which flag got me here? And then typically you reset the flag as the very next line. So you just say, hey, all right, message received, got that flag, resetting it. Um, and then you can do something if you like need to do something, because presumably you called this interrupt for a reason and you need to take some action. So that's the place where you'll take that action. So last time we learned about timer interrupts. Uh, now we're gonna add another one. So the one that we're gonna add today is push button interrupts. So another event that could happen is you could actually have a push button event um, and that could call an interrupt. We've used push buttons before, but we've always done polling. We've, we've said like, you know, what's the value? What's the value? What's the value? What's the value? Um, whereas now just whenever it changes, we're gonna call an interrupt. There are technically four different interrupts uh, with push buttons. One is on the RB0 button, so whenever it sees a press. And then there's also one on RB1 and RB2. Those are the three we actually like care about. There's also another one, um, which we're not gonna use very much, on RB4, 5, 6, 7. If any of them changes, it calls that interrupt. Um, we're gonna actually not, uh, not focus on that one because it's, there's other microcontrollers don't do anything like that. So we're gonna focus on just these three uh, push button interrupts. And then some other lecture, not today, uh, we'll talk about um, UART communication and its interrupt. So these three are the ones we want to learn about. There is a library, just kind of like we've been using before, that will help us set the special function registers. The library in this case is called um, portb.h, because it helps you set up port B. There's actually only one library function that we're going to use inside of there. Um, and it's called open, uh, you know, RB0, INT. Technically, there are three because there's one for each one, but they all work the same, right? So you call this function, you send it a couple flags, just like we did before, so a couple um, pound defines, um, and you set it up. The only things that you have to choose are whether you want interrupts on or off. Uh, we're going to always say on because why have this thing unless you're going to turn them on? Uh, we're going to ask if you want rising edge or falling edge. We're typically going to say falling edge because we care about push buttons, so we care about when you press the button, so we want the falling edge. Um, and then there's also this thing for internal pull-up resistors. Um, it turns out we've been putting on external pull-up resistors, but some of port B has internal pull-ups, and we could be using those. Um, but we're not going to bother. We're just going to always use external ones. Um, so actually physically put a resistor external uh, to the system. So just to kind of mention what that one is. So those are the library functions we're going to use. Uh, let's go ahead and make ourselves a new project. Ooh. So open up MPLAB. So inside MPLAB, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. Same steps as always. I'm going to use my PIC 18F4520. I'm going to use my pit kit three, so I've got my, my programmer right here ready to go. I'm going to select the compiler that we use, and I'm going to name this project uh, Interrupt Counters. 
So the goal of this project is to display three interrupts. So what I want to do is I want to create a new uh, template. Uh, and the template that I want to use is one we haven't used before, and that is template with interrupts. Um, so it doesn't show up on my list because I haven't used it before. So I'm going to say other. And what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go to the C area, and I'm going to find this template with interrupts. If you don't have this, then you probably missed a step back in the introduction to MPLAB X video, so you should go back and do that if you don't have it here. Um, so this template, uh, I'm going to give it a name, so I'm going to call it uh, interrupt counters. Very common for me to just make the .c file the same name as the project, it's easy. What this template does is it's very similar to the other template. You can see it's kind of got the same start, uh, some of the same configuration bits. Uh, but then it does have some new areas, so it's just added a few new areas. Um, what it's added is it's added um, this high ISR and low ISR. What these are is these are interrupt service routines. There's a little bit of boilerplate code here that will never change, so you can kind of ignore it, just it has to be in there. Um, what it's doing is it's using assembly language to call a function. Um, the reasons why are not that important to you. It has a little new section in main. Uh, this new section in main is it sets the mode for interrupts, either high prior or sorry, compatibility mode or priority mode. We'll talk about that next time. And then it does the important task of turning on uh, the high priority global interrupt enable. Um, and then your interrupts can kind of go into this area. And so we're going to add some today. And then down below, it's actually got the high and low ISR functions. So these are the functions that get called when an interrupt happens. So our goal is to print out to the screen uh, three counters. So I'm going to go ahead and make three counters. Um, I'll call them RB0 counter, um, and then RB1 counter, and RB2 counter. And we want to display these to the LCD, uh, so we're going to have to do some work for the LCD. Um, one of the things I know I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have a character array. Uh, we're going to be printing stuff on line 2, so I went ahead and made a line 2 character array. This is stuff we've done before, so I'm going to do this kind of quick, right? So the things we have to do in order to use the LCD, <laughs> getting quite a few projects up over here, by the way, but that's okay. By the way, if you ever get confused as to which one is like running, you can always say um, make, uh, sorry, set as main project. Um, but for me, that hasn't been a problem. So I'm going to say new uh, LCD module.c, and I'm going to keep its name the same. And then in the header files area, I'm going to say LCD module.h, but I'm going to keep its name the same in order to actually use it, and then I'm going to close them because I know what they are. And then in order to actually use it in my code, I better include it. So I'm going to say pound include uh, LCD module.h. So in order to use this, what I need to do is I need to do um, xlcd, oops, xlcd init, and I'm going to hit control space, xlcd clear, and I'm going to hit control space. And what I want to do here is I want to print on line one some static information that won't change. So I'm going to say X LCD um, line one home. Again, I just type the L and then auto completed. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a put uh, ROM string. So X LCD put uh, ROM string. So ROM is a constant. And the constant that I'm going to print is I'm just going to print out a little title for RB0, RB1, and RB2. Uh, I chose to leave one space in front and then two spaces between them, but you can do whatever you would like there. So that's what I'm going to print just on line one. Um, and then just to kind of keep getting the LCD stuff prepared, uh, I'm going to say XLCD uh, line two home. And in this area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out um, that line 2 character array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it up with um, three numbers. Uh, the formatted print string that I chose to use here, instead of just plain old percent %d, I chose to use percent %3d. What that does is that makes it take exactly three characters no matter what. That way it will line up with my labels above. Um, and I'm just going to print out RB0 counter 
um, RB1 uh, counter and RB2. And I'm just typing the first part of the variable name and then hitting control space to autocomplete it. So what that will do is that will load up that character array and then the last step is to LCD put RAM string uh, for line 2. And before I get into any fancy code uh, with interrupts that's like new this time, I'm going to go ahead and run this and I'm just going to make sure that it prints that RB0, RB1, uh, RB2 on line 1 um, and then on the bottom I want to make sure that it prints uh, 0, 0, 0. So it looks like I've got to say yes to the stupid error message. Um, and then it's going to come through and uh, print on my screen, hopefully, RB0, RB1, RB2, and they all have a value of 0 initially. Great, so that knows my uh, LCD stuff is now ready to go. So now it's time to learn some of the new things. So some of the new things that we want to learn is we want to use these new library functions. So these new library functions were um, open rb0 init. Um, they live within the port b.h file. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can add port b.h. So pound include uh, port b.h. And the place where I'm going to put these opens is inside this like little add specific interrupts here area. They don't have to go right here, but I mean, it's a fine place to put them, right? Um, so the thing that I want to do is I want to do an open for port B init, um, and I'm going to have to set it uh, in certain ways. You can figure out these words, by the way, by looking at the, I like the PDF of this the best. Um, and then that way, if you wanted, you could also like just copy and paste these things out, right? So if you don't remember exactly what they are, uh, you could just, you know, copy them. Um, and then paste them in here. Of course, I missed the P. Um, so I want interrupts on, and I want other things. Another thing I want is I want falling edge, um, and I want to turn the pull-ups off. And so I could copy these things in. You could also use code completion to help. So if I just type FAL and hit control space, you can see it completed the falling edge. Um, and if I say port B um, pull-ups off, um, I can auto-complete that. What these do is they obviously turn interrupts on, which is the main one we want. They say they're going to be falling edge, push button, falling edge. It'll get it when, it, when you push the button. And then this pull-ups off, um, there is actually a pull-up resistor uh, inside the chip that we could use. We just choose not to. Uh, we like to put it external so you can see it and know that it's there. I'm going to do the exact same thing for interrupt 1 and 2. So now I've got an interrupt that will get called um, when I push any of those three buttons. So writing the setup code was fairly easy. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, figure out what to put into this area. So we need to handle each interrupt. Um, and the main thing we need to know is what is that magic flag name for each of these interrupts. The place where you figure that out, um, there's, there's a couple places, a couple good resources. Um, I like to go to courseware. And this one right here, the interrupt list, I find extremely useful. Um, so this interrupt list will tell you what is the what is the name of the flag and things like that. So the thing that we want here is we want the interrupt zero flag. So it's this guy right here. Um, I int con bits um, int zero if. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other two, right? So I need also the flag for interrupt one. And then I'm also going to need the flag for interrupt two. So if I've got all those flags here handy, then I won't have to go searching for them. You can see that they're kind of in a bunch of crazy different places. Um, one's in an incon three register, the other is in an, um, I guess they're both in incon three but the other is an incon, and that's just because you can only fit so much inside a special function register. The structure of almost every interrupt we're going to write is like this. We say, who is the flag that got us here? And then the first thing we want to do is we want to reset that flag, right? And then all I'm going to do inside the interrupt is I'm just going to increment that counter. So I'm just going to say RB0 counter plus plus. And I'm going to do that exact same thing uh, for all three interrupts, and the only difference between them is what flag they are using 
and of course what variable they are incrementing. So I'm just going to say, hey, if it was this flag, reset it and change the RB1 counter. If it was this flag right here, then reset that flag and increment the RB2 counter. So it's fairly simple code, right? Like, I mean, it makes sense. You just, you're looking for the flag uh, so that you know who got you here and then you're gonna increment a variable and of course reset the flag. If you fail to reset the flag, what's gonna happen is it's gonna immediately call this function right back. So let's go ahead and run it now. And you can see that these values will always be updating inside the while loop. And so now whenever we press a button, oops, got caught mid, mid update there. Whenever we press a button, what should happen is it should increment the value uh, so if I have this guy and I press the RB0 button, it should increment RB0, hopefully by one. Um, if I press RB1, it goes up by one, and RB2, it goes up by one. So this code is, is done, um, but we're going to tell you a little bit more, like we always do. One thing I want to tell you is try pressing each, each one nine times real fast. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I look at this, you would expect it to be 10, 10, 10, right? Um, mine is actually 15, 13, and 17. Um, so how did that happen? The reason that happens is something called debounce, um, and that's when you press a button, it's mechanical, and it kind of actually hits, and then rebounds a little bit, and then hits again, and again, and again. Um, and if the microcontroller is fast enough, it will actually catch all those little hits. Um, and we're going to fix that in a later video lecture, but not right now. The only other thing that I wanted to tell you in this video lecture is that these are library functions, but library functions just set special function registers. Um, and to be honest, what these set is so easy that you really might not use the library function. You might choose to just use the special function registers. And what they set, I'll just kind of go through it here. So some, some notes on if you had trouble following along. What they set is just two bits. Um, so they say, turn on interrupts. And they say, set the falling edge to zero. I think the falling edge was even the default, which is kind of funny. Um, so really, they just set this bit and that bit. Um, and you could find those bit names in the, um, oops, in the other one in the where is that interrupt bit. So all it did is it just set this guy and it set this guy. So it really just set two bits. Uh, so it's up to you whether you would choose to use the library function or choose to set the special function registers directly. Obviously if you don't use the library then you don't need to include port b.h. Alright and then the uh, the solution code is in here. Uh, that's it for this time. Next time we'll talk about high priority, or sorry, priority interrupts and compatibility mode interrupts. See you then.